You know, Mary is so woven into Catholic culture, I would be hard pressed to tell exactly when I first started to think about Mary. But one of the stories I like to tell is about a rosary set that I got when I was uh, had my first Holy Communion. Uh, I used to pray the rosary at night before going to bed. I didn't know very much about the rosary, but I knew I could pray the Hail Marys and the Our Father, and I used to say the Hail Marys. When I was walking to school in the morning, if there was a big test or something I was nervous about, like a big trumpet solo or something. So anyway, I would uh, pray the rosary when I couldn't fall asleep, and I would leave it in my bed. And in the morning, when my mom would make my bed, sometime the rosary would fall on the floor, and she always used to warn me about that, because she said, one day, I'm gonna run over that thing with my vacuum cleaner. So one day, I came home and my mom said, go up and take a look at your uh, bed. And on my bed was the rosary and it was missing three or four beads. And uh, I said, what happened? And she said, well, as I told you, you know, the rosary got stuck in the vacuum cleaner. And I took it to my sister and I said, look, it's missing three or four beads. And she said, well, I guess it won't take you so long to pray it now, will you? That rosary was one of the few things I brought to the novitiate, the Jesuit novitiate. And I was a little embarrassed about it because I thought, well, maybe people won't have as much of a devotion to Mary uh, as I do, but I needn't have worried. Everybody brought their rosary, and Mary was a very big presence in our novitiate. And it wasn't just the Mother of God that we learned about. It was really Mary, uh, the woman of the Gospels, uh, Mary, the first disciple, the one who hears uh, the Word of God in the Annunciation, uh, Mary, the one who points to Jesus. That was a popular image. Uh, at the wedding feast of Cana, Mary says, do whatever he tells you. Uh, Mary, the suffering mother, uh, the one who grieves over her son. Uh, Mary, the one who intercedes for us. All these wonderful roles that come out in the Gospels that we learned about. But for some reason, it was Mary at the Annunciation that really spoke to me. It was that story that drew me in to the person of Mary. It's hard to give a little backstory on Mary because we really know very little about her. It's probably likely that Mary was 14 or 15 at the time that she was, um, uh, she met the angel Gabriel. But Mary is really like so many poor people in the world. Mary's living in a small town uh, at the time. Uh, you know, the town of Nazareth is seen as a real backwater. You know, there's a joke uh, even in the Gospels where when Jesus is announced to come from Nazareth, one of the disciples, Nathaniel, says, can anything good come from Nazareth? Now, a lot of people say, well, that's some sort of theological message, but really, he's basically making fun of Nazareth. So Mary is in this very small town. She's probably illiterate. She's not very well known, you know? She's probably known by the people in her town, but God chooses her, and I think it's a wonderful way of seeing how God can choose even people who are unknown, uh, illiterate, poor, uh, and really at the bottom of the pile, I mean, they're also um, living under an occupied power to do something wonderful. Uh, and it really is through this young girl that the world has changed. It's through her, yes. And I think it's also important to see that Mary had the freedom to say no. Uh, when the angel asks her, Mary can say no. But even in the midst of what must have been a very frightening thing to assume, Mary says yes to God and brings new life into the world. Why is it that the story of the Annunciation, which is in the beginning chapters of Luke, where the angel announces to Mary that she will be the mother of Jesus, why is that so powerful and meaningful for people? After thinking about that for some time, it's dawned on me that the Annunciation really captures our relationship with God, if you think about it. In the story, the angel comes to Mary. Just like in our lives, God kind of comes to us through some amazing uh, experiences. We might. Um, find out that we're going to have a child. We might have good news about a new job. We might even get some bad news. But God kind of comes into our lives. In the Annunciation, Mary is a little fearful, as we are frequently. We're fearful of change. We're fearful of what this might mean in our lives. Mary questions in the Annunciation, which is wonderful. You have this poor, illiterate girl uh, who's saying, how can this be? That's one of the things she asked the angel. And how often does that happen in our lives? We say to ourselves and to God, how can this be? How can this thing in my life be accepted? And then what happens is the angel says to Mary, look at your cousin Elizabeth. 
she is pregnant, the person who was thought to be barren. In other words, God sometimes says to us, through our friends or through our memory, look at the times that I've been at work in your life. Look at how things have always worked out. And that gives us the strength, as it did for Mary, to be able to say yes to God. Mary says to the angel, let it be done to me according to your will. And in our lives, when we can say yes to God, just like Mary, we can bring something new into the world, not exactly birthing Jesus Christ, but something new and something wonderful through our lives. But you know, there's even more to that story. I was talking to a friend of mine who is a, a sister, and I told her the story of how I thought the Annunciation really mirrors our relationship with God. And she said, but you're forgetting the most important part. And I said, what's that? And she said, then the angel left her. And it dawned on me that what she meant was that frequently we have these wonderful experiences of God, whether in our own family or at mass or in prayer. And then sometimes we feel that God kind of backs away a little bit and we're left on our own, just like Mary was. Sometimes I think, gee, I wonder if Mary ever had as powerful as an experience of God as she did at the Annunciation. That's the part where Mary's life, I think, really intersects with our own. It's the time that God leaves us and we feel a little on our own. That's the time of faith. And that's really, I think, the message that Mary has for all of us, to remain faithful even when we don't feel that God is especially near. One of the things that I continue to reflect on is the mixture of joy and sorrow in Mary's life. Uh, Mary is told by the angel Gabriel that she's going to give birth to the Son of God, um, which must have been both exciting and terrifying. This means uh, for this poor, illiterate girl uh, in first century Palestine that there's no roadmap for her life. Uh, and everything that happens to Jesus, I think, is a surprise to Mary. It must have been very difficult for Joseph and Mary to figure out exactly what to do with Jesus. There's that wonderful story uh, where Jesus is found in the temple preaching to the elders. And he says, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? Who knows what Mary would have made of that? And then as Jesus starts his ministry, uh, for example, at the wedding feast of Cana, uh, Mary says to Jesus, you need to change this water into wine. And he says to her somewhat harshly, woman, you know, it's not my time. So there's Mary, in a sense, being sort of criticized by Jesus, but I think it's pretty wonderful that Mary seems to understand his role even better than Jesus does. Mary, I think, who probably had a little more time to reflect on what Jesus was going to become, knows somehow that this is what Jesus has to do. And so her last words in scripture are, do whatever he tells you, which I think is a wonderful way of showing not only her love, but her way of challenging Jesus uh, to be the person that he's meant to be. What is Mary's message for us? Well, simply put, Mary's message for us is no matter how difficult or crazy or wild God's will may seem, saying yes to it can ultimately bring life to you and to the rest of the world. <laughs>